have. I think, uh, Robert, I saw your hand earlier and then it went down. If you want to start us off, we'll go to uh, Robert. Sure. Hi, Mike. This is Robert Engelbretson in Houston. I'm kind of an interloper here, <laughs> but I just wanted to say thank you for uh, the, the museum. I think APH has done a fantastic job with it. And uh, Larry Skutkin was absolutely right. Uh, visiting the museum was kind of like a pilgrimage to Mecca for me. So it's uh, you know, I spent several hours. Uh, so I just, I just really just wanted to say thanks both for the, the excellent accessible museum pres uh, designs as well as for your presentation. And also to, um, to amplify, uh, Daphne posted the, uh, the web address in the chat. And if you go to the virtual exhibits, the descriptions of all of the slates and the Braille writers are uh, fantastic. So this really wasn't a question. It was just uh, giving uh, the APH Museum a, an extra plug. It is a, a fantastic experience, and I hope I can come back and visit again sometime. Thank you, Robert. I, I seem to remember. I think I might have given you your tour. Is that, is that part of it? Yeah. Yeah, part of it. Okay, we've got lots of hands up for this one. So we'll try to go through uh, through people quickly. Uh, Marcy. I just wanna thank you, Mike, because I heard you last year at the ACB convention and I just, I loved your stories then and I love them now. And thank you for the update on the Helen Keller stuff. I was going, that was gonna be my question was how that was coming along because you talked about it specifically at the ACB convention last year. And that was, it was just amazing to hear about everything that, that you have. And so thank you and keep up the storytelling work. Thank you. So, <laughs> so think about this. One of the, one of the things that's in the Helen Keller archive is a bronze casting of her hands. How many of you all would enjoy the opportunity to shake hands with Helen <laughs> Keller? <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Wow. Is that good? That would be great, right? That, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. What amazing hands she had. <laughs> Next, uh, Aiden. You're still muted. Still muted. Oh, okay, okay. There we go. I have to, I have to go. mute myself. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to say uh, you know, that maybe uh, APH didn't make uh, a Braille writer to compete with the purpose, but we did. Um, you, um, I do want to thank you for making the bookport uh, the the, the, the well, cheapest the audio and Braille note taker left the and alert. reading device that we've with user replaceable batteries. I think that that we've ever had, and I, I think that that's a very affordable way of showing Braille to, to, to blind people. And I'm, and I'm glad, glad to get to use one. I also have a, a question um, with the slates that you have. Do you have the one I saw from England, the read write slate, which has rollers, uh, which allows you to, to roll the paper up and read what you write and allows you to write in a forward direction as opposed to backwards? Yes. Um, or you reversed know. or Whatever yeah, there, there is, term is. yeah, there are several designs like that. Um, uh, in fact, uh, th they made a machine called a Stainsby Wayne uh, Braille Writer, but really what it is is a slate uh, that uses keys instead of a, a stylus, and, uh, and then you roll the paper through it. Just kind of, So it's kind of like a hybrid between a typewriter and a, uh, a slate. Lots of different ideas, you know. Every, everybody that looked at it said, oh, I can do better than that, right? And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the fun things for people is just going through all those designs. Uh, just to, to a follow up to that, do we have um, any of those still being made in North America? Because that, that is, a, I think, one of the best designs, the one from the UK. I think slate manufacturing in general is way down. You know, the printing house is gone. I think we only have four or five designs in our catalog right now. Uh, and, and, and none of them are currently actually being made here at, 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 at APH. When I started here in the machine shop, we had 10 or 15 different designs. So, yeah, I think slate use in general is way down. So that's a question that we need to see. What does that mean, right? Next, uh, Kim. Oh, thank you so much. I really want to go there so much. You can't believe it, how much I want to go there. You can open our borders and we can get across. Maybe we can uh, get to the museum. Um, my question is, um, 
Did you always sort of collaborate with Canada? Like when did APH start kind of um, working or working collaboratively across North America? Because uh, I know we would get books from APH, you know, when I was in school studying and stuff. stuff. But I just wondered, when did you sort of form a relationship with, uh, with Canada? Yeah, that's a great question. I don't really actually have a correct answer. I have an intuition more that, um, you know, people, you know, teachers in Canada were, you know, we're going to be looking for sources for particular textbooks and products. They had the APH catalog. And we've always sold our stuff to anybody, you know, eat. Um, of course, you don't have access to the federal quota fund, but, you know, from the beginning of the Association for of Instructors of Educators for the Blind, the AAIB, there were always Canadian members in that group. So I think there's always been kind of a, you know, listening across the border, talking to each other across the border, um, uh, just because, you know, you're going to take advantage of resources that are closer to you rather than, you know, you know what, does that make any sense? But I don't actually know. I haven't researched this, but it sounds like a great research project. Yeah, it would be fascinating. And in order to get into the museum, do you have to book ahead? I know this must be different right now with um, COVID. We, we have been closed. We have been closed since uh, March 17th of 2020. A sad, sad day, right? But we are reopening to the public on July 6th Oh. of this of this summer uh we are open 8 30 to 4 30 monday through friday 10 to 3 on saturdays we are free of charge uh to come to the museum you don't have to make any kind of uh, arrangement uh, if you want to do a factory tour we do a factory tour at 10 o'clock and at two o'clock and those are free you just show up about that time and then we we, we fill the tour okay Vinny. Audio now unmuted. Alert. Okay, good. Good morning. This is wonderful. I've just really enjoyed now, all the alert. presentations and yours. Uh, I grew up in the States, but uh, never got to see all these things. I'm in Canada now. Um, question Has anybody ever put out a book about what you called the War of the Dots? If so, where can we get it? I think the best there, there's there's a number of books where it's kind of talked about. OK, uh, one of them is Robert Irwin's As I Saw It, As I Saw It. That's that's his biography. And uh, he tells the most dramatic and interesting uh, uh, uh telling of the of the war of the dots i think there's also some stuff in a book from nls called braille into the next millennium um but yeah i, I that's my recommendation and i think that's available on the internet archive uh so and and they have a number of accessible formats there so you should be able to get it on internet archive okay and where can i also get an a um something on ueb in other words I don't need a massive, you know, thousand volume thing, but just a com a list of common contractions uh, of changes. And also, is it in the music code? Does you it, has you I U E B changed Braille music reading? I don't know the answer to that second one. Probably somebody on this call does know the answer. My recommendation is to go to the Bana website, Braille Authority of North America, and you will be able to find some materials on U E B there. And Vinny, if you uh, if you want to send a message to info at blc lbc.ca with those questions, we can we can get you some information on that as well. So we've got time for just uh, two more quick questions. I see two hands, Devin. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Mike, for your presentation. It was terrific. Um, you were talking about. Uh, teaching handwriting. Was it cursive writing that they taught or uh, printing uh, with print letters? Both, both. Uh, we have in our in our collection these almost like hard rubber writing. Well, it's really like a hard rubber eight and a half by 11 inch piece and it has recessed uh, shapes of letters in both just regular print and in cursive. Um, so I, I would say they were teaching both. 
the cursive may be more for signing your name and the print for just, just handwriting. Um, but um, there's a number of different things like that, but they were teaching on both. And Daphne, back to you. Okay, thanks, Mike. Um, I just was wondering, APH Museum is accessible by design. Do you have published guidelines and or recommendations for other museums wanting to join the, join the party? Well, I've got a thought on that, okay? There are published guidelines on how to make exhibits accessible to people with all kinds of disabilities, okay? But I think a lot of people treat those like a checklist, right? Yes. We're just gonna check this box and then we can say we're accessible, but you're not, okay? The best way to make a museum accessible is to, and, and, and let's just talk about people who are blind or vision impaired because that's what we know, is to get some people who love your museum who are blind or vision impaired to come over and give them a tour and sit down and talk to them and get to know them and ask them, you know, what, what parts of the experience that we're giving you right now are good and what, what are terrible. And, and, and I think that part of it gets missed is that people don't talk to people. They just want a checklist. They just, so that they can say, yeah, we met this, this list, but that doesn't make you accessible. It's gotta be usable too. And I think, and, and by the way, we have a lot of things to improve in a my museum too. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the only way to do that is to have conversations. And I know that's what we're going to be doing on, over the next few years as we get ready to, to, to reinstall our, our museum. Well, thanks very much, Mike. Oh, you you guys have a great meeting. <laughs> Uh, I'm coming to northern Minnesota to go fishing tomorrow, but you won't let me in the country, so I'm just going to have to stay in Minnesota. <laughs> well, as soon as we're able to, I think a whole bunch of us are now planning a, a trip to the APH Museum. Thank you so much, Mike, uh, for such a great presentation. Um, I also want to give a shout out to APH for a resource that probably a lot of the teachers here know about already, but their Virtual Excel Academy um, has been incredible, uh, an incredible resource over the past uh, year. So thank you for all that APH continues to do, both uh, with the museum and beyond. Thank you, you guys will be good. Thanks.